الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الذي لا يبلغ مدحته القائلون ولا يحسي نعماءه العادون ولا يعدي حقه المجتهدون الذي يرى ولا يرى وشهد النجوى تباركه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على خيرة خلقه أجمعين أبي القاسم محمد والصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين المظلومين المقتولين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من يوم عداواتهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم الكتاب المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين آمنوا بالله ورسوله ثم لم يرتابوا وجاهدوا بأموالهم وأنفسهم في سبيل الله أولئك هم الصادقون صل على محمد وآل محمد Before I begin, I would like to remind us all, including myself first and foremost, as I've been mentioning over the nights, that we are all the guests of Sayyidah Zahra. That we have come here not out of our own volition, not out of some kind of accident, but because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has answered that dua of Sayyidah Zahra and has chosen us and given us that opportunity to sit in the majlis of her son, Abu Abdullah al-Hussein ibn Ali. This ni'ma is like no other. And that's why I want to remind us that when we are in this majlis, we are, we are the guests of Sayyidah Zahra. And if we are the guests of Sayyidah Zahra, then we certainly would not disappoint her by having bad behavior or bad adab during the majlis. If we consider our, ourselves to be the duyuf of Sayyidah Zahra, how would we treat her? Would we chat or play with our phone or something like of that, of that nature? Then of course this is disappointing to Sayyidah Zahra. It's bad adab. And then we don't deserve to be the guests of Sayyidah Zahra in that case. So inshallah, we will take heed and remember that, inshallah. I'll share a tradition before I begin the lecture tonight, because every night I want to try to bring forward something about Sayyidah Zahra and the majlis of Imam Hussein. It is narrated in the book, um, Awalim al-Ulum wal-Ma'arif wal-Ahwal by Sheikh Abdullah al-Bahrani al-Isfahani. It's a wonderful book about the life of Sayyidah Zahra in two volumes. Here he transmits a tradition from a middle mu'mineen where he says, إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ نَادَ مُنَادٌ مِنْ بُطْنَانِ الْعَرْشِ مِنْ بِطْنَانِ الْعَرْشِ that on the day of judgment, a screamer or caller or a call will come from a caller from the core, from the depths of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this scream on the day of judgment will, will say, Ya ahlil qiyamah, ikhmadu absarakum li, tujaw, li tujawizu Fatima bint Muhammad. لِتُجَوِّزُوا فَاطِمَ بِنْتِ Muhammad. All oh, the people of, of Qiyama, lower your heads so Sayyidah Zahra can come onto the Ma'ashar. This tradition is transmitted in many, many, many books. Many books, including the books of, of uh, Mustadraq ala Sahihain of Hakim Nasapuri. All oh, the people of the Day of Judgment, lower your heads so Sayyidah Zahra could, could pass. مَا قَمِيسْ مَخْدُوبْ بِدَمِّ الْحُسَيْنِ With the shirt that is soaked with the blood of Hussein ibn Ali. 
on the mahshar, on the day of judgment, on the plains of the day of judgment, say the Zahra will come forth with the shirt that is covered in the blood of her son, Hussein. And she will take this shirt and attach it or tie it to the pillar or the leg of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَقُولُ أَنْتَ الْجَبَّارِ الْعَدَلِ Ya Allah, you are the jabbar, you are the just. اِقْدِ بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَ مَنْ قَتَلَ وَلَدِي Judge between me and the one who killed my son. فَيَقْدِ اللَّهُ بِسُنَّتِي وَرَبِّ الْقَعْبَى And this is now a middle mu'mineen speaking, it's saying that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ruled according to my favor, my tradition, and he is a Rabb of the Kaaba. Thumma taqulu, then Sayyidah Zahra will say, this is Imam Ali narrating about what his wife will do on the day of judgment. Allahumma shfa'ni fi man baka ala musibatihi. Oh Allah, make me an intercessor and a shafi'ah. For anyone who will cry over my son. فَشَفَعَهَا اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ And Allah made her an intercessor and a shafi' for them. Now if we are in the majlis of Sayyidah Zahra, we must think about how we behave. We must think about what we are here for. Otherwise there's no point of coming to the majlis of Sayyidah Zahra. She is the sahiba of the majlis. And we seek her intercession for the sake that we are here to remember the slaughter of her son. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So today I want to discuss what it means, what it means to be a man or manliness, a rajuliya in the tradition of the Ahlul Bayt. So I thought, who would be a better example for us to look at but Abi Fadl al Abbas? So let's go to his ziyara. What do we say? Ashadu laka bil taslim wa tasdiq wal wafa wa nasiha. I testify to your absolute peaceful submission to your affirmation of the truth, to your undivided loyalty, to the successor of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لخلف النبي المرسل والسبت المنتجد But what is my point here? My dear brothers and sisters, the attributes of shuja'a and wafa, of courage or bravery and loyalty, are not something which come about overnight. They have to be earned by us. We have to develop these attributes at the very core of our soul. There's no use in coming and remembering the sacrifice of Abi Fadl al-Abbas and how strong he was and how tall he was and how hard he fought and how valiantly he fought and how many people he fought without working on, uh, on developing these attributes of courage and loyalty within our own souls. Are you with me here? And here I'm not speaking about modern notion of bravery, fighting for your country and your army and going off to war for your country and defending your border. No, this has nothing to do. This has to do with the haq of the deen. I'm not talking about bravery in the sense of nationalism or in the name of holding up a certain national flag. And if we did have any flag, it would be the flag of Abu Abdullah Hussein ibn Ali, and that flag knows no border. There's no border that limits that flag. That is a flag which is for the alameen, which is for the universe. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. The Amir of the Mu'mineen, when asked about Rajuliyah, about manhood, 
What did he say? Did he say someone who goes to the gym and can lift 300 pounds on the bench press? What did he say? Did he say the strongest, the most powerful of you, the one who can kill the most people, ride the horse the fastest, jump off a horse while it's still galloping? What did he say? He said the one who has the most control over his nafs. Imagine. Ashaddukum. The most strongest and powerful of you is the one who has the most control over his nafs, over his desires. And in another tradition he says, إِذَا قَدَرَ لَا يَتَنَاوَلُ مَا لَيْسَ لَهُ That when he is empowered, when he is in a position of authority as a father or a husband, as a leader of a community, as a scholar, as a teacher, as an older brother, he never takes what is not his. And that includes money and someone else's dignity. And Izzah. Because that Izzah is given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That for example, when he has a dispute or disagreement with his wife, or a difference of opinion, or one of the spouses made a mistake, does he crush her? so to speak? Does he take that izzah and that dignity that Allah has given her? Does he rip that away from her or not? If he doesn't, then he's a man. If he takes it away from her, he's an animal. That when someone has a sense of authority and status and power, they never take what doesn't belong to them. Imagine, and this is the meaning of a man, a rajul, in the Islamic tradition, in the aqwal of Ahlul Bayt, alayhima afdala salatu wa salam. Rather, moving on, a true human being, leave aside a true man, a true human being is the one for whom the only determining factor for his or her actions is al-haq, is the truth. As the middle mu'mineen says, لا تخذك في الله لومة اللائم وخذ الغمرات إلى الحق حيث كان When it comes to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it comes to the haq of Allah, and of course from the haqq of Allah, the right of Allah, comes the right of the Rasul and the Ahlul Bayt, obviously. When it comes to the matters of the deen, we don't take into account the complaint of the complainers. They can complain and whine and scream and kick all they want, but when it comes to the haqq of the thaqalain, of the kitab and the atra, we dive into the depths of the haqq wherever it will take us. We are not afraid of our community, we're not afraid of our family, we're not afraid of our neighbors when it comes to fulfilling the rights of Allah and the Ahlul Bayt. Fourth Muhammad has come before we start with Brother Sheikh. Salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Is that a voice from the sama, from the sky? <laughs> so, what does it mean to be a man? As they say, be a man, be a man. There's always this, this nonsense kind of very barbaric attitude, right? Of what it, or be a man means you can you know, lift so much weights. Be a man means you can show your wife you're a man when you put her down or when you put her in her place, as they say, in certain cultures. This is not the way of the Ahlul Bayt. This is not the way of the Quran. This is not the way of the Deen of Islam. This is the way of jahal and culture and barbarism and the baha'im, the animals. A man is the one who stands for the rights of Allah and his Rasul. not over petty issues. 
صلي على محمد وآل محمد And in Surah Al-Hujarat, there's a beautiful verse which speaks to this. It's so beautiful where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا Surah Al-Hujarat, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is purely a description of Abi Fadl al-Abbas. It has to be. It's such a beautiful verse, a description of the Ashab of Imam Al-Husayn. Where those who believe in Allah and His Messenger... Do so. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا They don't turn back. After they have said, أَشَدُّ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَا وَأَشَدُّ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ They don't turn back. خلاص. The قِصَّة doesn't change بعدين. It doesn't change after. Consistency. They don't go this way, shimalan, yaminan, wa shimalan, yaminan, wa shimalan. Straight. They have their principles, their constitution is the thaqalain. It is the Quran and it is the sunnah of the Ahlul Bayt. Lam yartabu. They don't turn back. Meaning, after they've testified to this, they would not dare miss the five wajib prayers. If they, if they don't want to become, if they don't want to be amongst those who do turn back. Who are the, who are the munafiqun? The people who claim belief. They say, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahaduhu la sharika la. But yet, are tariq salat, sharab al khamar. Perform ghiba, namima, abuse their wife. These are not the mu'minun. These are not the sifa of the. The sifa of the mu'minun are the lam yaratabu. That they did not turn back after they submitted. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Or they try their very best at the bottom of their heart to fulfill their obligations. For example, they come to the majlis of Imam al-Hussein, they leave here, but don't bother setting an alarm for the Salat al-Fajr. God forbid. We seek refuge in Allah from this, because this is the road of nifaq. That they will come to the majlis, God forbid, of, of Imam al-Hussein, go home, go to bed, Set no alarm for Salat al-Fajr, meaning that they don't try, they don't make an attempt. Okay, if you set an alarm, you can't wake up, you tried your best, may Allah give you the strength, inshallah, and you perform the qada. But if someone wants to go home from this majlis, not bother setting an alarm for the Fajr prayer, sleep right through it, cruise right through it, How can they show their face in front of Sayyidah Zahra in, this, in the majlis of Sayyidah Zahra without making an attempt to reform themselves? Not saying not to come, but without making an attempt to change. These are the sifat of the ashab of Abu Abdullah. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ and they struggled with their wealth in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does this mean? Meaning when it comes to support the deen, they are the first in the lineup. When it comes to supporting Islamic education, they are the first to give. When it comes to fulfilling the hukuk of the aytam, they are the first in line. When it comes to the khums, that is a given. If they don't, don't do that, they fall into nifaq as well. The khums is amongst the wajibat here we're talking about. But okay, at the very basics, the akhmas. If the akhmas and the khumas is wajib on someone and they do not pay it, that year is lived a life of, of, of sin. 
In fact, according to traditions, it's makru to go to the home of someone who doesn't pay khums. To eat from that person's hand, it is makru. And this is not considered jihad fi sibilillah, because this is the wajibat. This is the, this is, these are the wajibat I'm talking about, not, not taking care of people on the street. I mean, these are the wajibat, the khumas. This is the haq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the sifat of the ashab of Abu Abdullah. For whom we've come to do latmiya for, for whom we've come to cry over, for whom we've come to love. But if two basic things are not fulfilled, salat al fajr and khums, then there's little use in talking about the very great attributes, going into the heavy duty, the higher daraja of things. If simple things like khumus and fajr are not implemented, inshallah they all are, of course. This is a given. These are amongst the wajibat. We're the Shia of the middle mu'minin. We go beyond the wajibat, inshallah. But this is a reminder. Because after all, the Quran is a tathkira. It is a reminder for all of us. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. And one simple example of spending in the way of Allah is supporting the markas. It doesn't have to be this one, whatever. That we take the hadith of Imam Asadiq to heart who says to Fudail, Rahimallahu man ahya amrana wa da'ala dhikrina. May Allah's mercy be upon the one who keeps our deen, our affair alive and calls people to remember us. What is the markaz for if not to call people to the sabil of the thaqalain? Kitabullah wa atra. If I cannot support a simple cause like this, it doesn't have to be this one, like I said, in general, in the world I'm talking about, then I don't qualify for the ayah. I don't qualify. And I don't qualify to be included in that rank of those who, for whom Sayyidina Zahra collects their dumu and their tears in the majlis of Imam al-Hussein. I can't be included in it because these basic sifat have to be there. The Quran is very, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is crystal clear here as to what are the sifat of the mu'minun. And of course, the greatest misdaq of this was Ashura, of course. And at the next level, jahadu bi anfusihim. Now we're switching gears. Now they don't only give their wealth, but they give of their souls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now of course we cannot compare ourselves to the severed arms of Abi Fadl al-Abbas. We cannot compare ourselves to the severed jugular vein of Ali al radiyan We cannot. It would be unfair and unjust for us to compare ourselves to them at that level. That, that's fair, fine. That would be inappropriate for us to compare our sifat to their sifat at that level. But a simple example of us pushing our body is the effort that all of us took to come here on time. The effort that the parents took to ensure that their children were ready to come to the markas on time. May Allah bless all of you, inshallah. The effort that everyone took, rain, sun, snow, to come to the majlis of Imam al Hussein. The effort that we take to fast in the month of Ramadan. The effort that we take in Hajj. The effort that we take to wake up for Salat, for those for, those for whom it is difficult to wake up for the Fajr prayer. Allah is shukur, subhanallah. Allah is grateful. This is a different issue, but 
And Allah is ready to accept whatever little we can offer. Whatever. But we have to make the effort, the juhd. We have to ask ourselves through every night of Muharram, what have I done to improve my connection with Allah and the Ahlul Bayt? What have I done to say my Salat better? What have I done to watch my hijab? What have I done to fix those negative habits that I have? If I cannot do this from night to night, then the majalis will not have an effect on my heart. It will not be productive. It will just be like spinning my wheels in the dirt, in quicksand. If there is no manifest attempt to change my life after I leave those doors, as a father, as a mother, as children, and as brothers and sisters, and as wives and as husbands. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. It is in these nights that I tell my sons, my daughters, my brothers, my sisters, that these are the ayam of Hussein ibn Ali. My life changes during these nights. This is another example of jahadu anfusahum, that they struggle with their souls, with themselves. That they do not allow these nights to be like any other night. For example, if they go home and they're used to watching a certain program, or I don't know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but they try their best to pay more attention to the deen in these nights. We should pay attention all year round, but especially in these nights. La siyama, khususan fi ayam, fi ayam al Hussein. And then inshallah, we will qualify to be included in this ayah in Surah Hujarat. Ulaika hum al-sadiqoon. Why? Because they are the ones who are truthful. Imagine. When I think, if someone asks me, what does, is he a truthful person or not? This puts a whole new perspective of what siddiq means. The truthful person is the one who testifies to Allah's oneness, to the messengership of Rasulullah, wa thumma lam yartab. And he did not turn back. وَجَاهَدَ بِأَمْوَالِهِ وَنَفْسِهِ And he struggled with every ounce of his wealth and his soul. This is how someone qualifies to be amongst الصَّادِقُونَ This is the world view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given to us. Rather, this is our worldview that Allah is teaching us to adopt. Truthfulness is a life of action. To be true, one must first be true to their own nafs, to their own self. Someone cannot be sadiq if they are ghafil of the salat. If they are intentionally neglectful of the wajib five prayers or intentionally neglectful of khums. These are just two examples I'm looking at today. They're not sadiq then, they're ghayru sadiq. I won't say kafir, that's something else. But they're not sadiq, not according to the Quran. They wouldn't be if someone was to ask him, is he truthful? Is he sadiq? Or is she sadiqa? Well, I know that, for example, this has to be known with absolute certainty, 110% certainty, that, for example, the individual doesn't believe in khums, or doesn't give khums. And the person's not sadiqa or sadiq.
because the wajibat are not fulfilled. According to Allah, we can only qualify to be amongst when we fulfill the first part of the ayah. And inshallah, all of us are sadiqun, inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And to this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuhan ladhina amu wa attaqullah wa kunu ma'a sadiqeen. O you who believe, have consciousness of Allah. Yani know that, yani, he is raqib, that he is watching every moment of our life. To know that every khatwa, every step I take, I will have to answer for it in front of Allah. In the words of Sayyid al-Khunsari, I'm giving a little bit something away from another lecture of Ayatollah al-Khunsari said once, rather not Ayatollah al-Khunsari, one of the grandfathers of Ayatollah Shirazi, he said once, listen to this, so powerful. Someone asked him, how have you fought against your nafs? How, what is taqwa? What is, how have you t what is the tariq to Allah? You know what he said? For every single word that comes out of my mouth, I first have asked how I will answer the malaika in the grave regarding every single harf that comes from my mouth. Every single harf. Every single letter and word. And kalima. That I take hisab of it every single day. Every letter and word that comes from my, uh, from my two lips. Between my two lips. Imagine, this is taqwa. This is taqullah. وَكُونُوا مَعَ صَادِقِينَ And be with the sadiqeen. Now of course the greatest misdaq of, of the masadiq of this verse is none other than Aba Abdullah al Hussein ibn Ali. There can be no greater manifestation and implementation of this verse than the life of Imam al Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt in general. قُونُوا مَعَ صَادِقِينَ يَعْنِي قُونُوا مَعَ مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ Be with Muhammad and his progeny. Peace and blessings be upon them all. So on the day of Ashura, when Abi Fadl Abbas was ready to lose his left arm, his right arm, ready to have his, ear, his eyes pierced by an arrow, why did he do this? Because he wanted to be with the one who was Asdaqu Sadiqeen, which is Abu Abdullah al Hussein ibn Ali. That is why. Because he knew that the truest misdaq and implementation of this verse is in my imam, is with my imam. He knew that the Ahlul Bayt are those, Bikum yumsiku as sama an taqa ala al arat illa bi idhnah. He knew that if it was not for my imam, the heavens would fall to the earth. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created my imam as a rahmah and a mercy to, these, to the worlds. Why is this? How can this be so? Because the Prophet has said, Awaluna Muhammad wa awsatuna Muhammad wa akhiruna Muhammad. The beginning of us is Muhammad, the middle of us is Muhammad, and the last of us is Muhammad. They are all a rahmah to the alameen. They are all the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whom this earth would not exist. La tarfutul ayn, not for a blink of an eye without the wujud of the imam. Abi Fadl Abbas knew this. He had the ma'rifah of his imam. He knew who his imam was. He knew who he was serving for. He knew whose alam, whose flag he was holding. There was no shubha, no shak in his heart. There was no shak in Muslim ibn Aqil's heart. There was no shak and doubt in Muslim ibn Ausajah's heart. There was no shak in Habib ibn Madahir's heart. 
No. All they wanted to do was kunu ma'asadiqeen. They wanted to be with the sadiqeen. And they gave their heads and their life and their arms for it. They didn't fight for Imam al Hussein because he was their brother or their cousin or their relative or he was from Beni Hashim. No, hey, heart. This is diminishing and demeaning their position. They did it because they know huwa al haqq wa huwa al sadiq. He is the truth and he is truthful. That he is the manifestation of Al Haq. They didn't fight for Imam Al Hussein in the name of a tribe, in the name of a country, in the name of a border, in the name of their father or their grandfather's allegiance to this person or that person. Especially Muslim Da'u Saja Habib ibn Mawahir and individuals like this. No, hey, heart. No way. This is mustahid to think this. They fought for him because they wanted to be included in these ayat. الَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَيْكَ هُمَ الصَّادِقُونَ صَلِّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ And they knew, these, they knew that the Ahlul Bayt were as narrated in Ziyarat al Jami'ah, Kuntum Shofa'ai fa inni lakum muti'ah. That you are my intercessors in front of Allah, wa inni lakum muti'ah. And to you I obey. Wa man ata'akum faqad ata' Allah. The one who obeys you has obeyed Allah. Wa man asa'akum faqad asa' Allah. And the one who disobeys you has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَحَبَّكُمْ فَقَدْ أَحَبَّ اللَّهِ And the one who loves you has loved Allah. وَمَنْ أَبْغَذَكُمْ فَأَبْغَذَ اللَّهِ And the one who has angered you has angered Allah. They knew that the obedience, love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was tied directly to the obedience and love towards Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Not tied to a sense of, Bani, of, of, of Saudi Arabia or Arab or this or Hakada or Middle East, you know, on, so on and so forth. No. This is all nonsense. This is all Western modern notions of, of nationalism. It wasn't tied to being Arab or Ghairu Arab or Ajam or this or Persian or non Persian. Or from this tribe fighting with this tribe? No. It had to do with Ta'atullah wa Rasuluhu wal awli amri minkum. Wal ulul amri minkum. Obedience to Allah and His Rasul and those who are, have the wilaya and the authority after the Rasul. Khalas. That is the beginning and the end of the whole story. Not nationalism, not a border, not tribe. Salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. They also knew, Ya Aba Abdullah, Anta Safinatun Najat. You are the ship of salvation. And Ya Allah, I am going to board your ship on the 10th of Muharram on the day of Ashura. And Ya Allah, bihaqqi for the sake of this ship of salvation, I will be saved. That as I walk on the sirat, which is as thin as a hair on the day of judgment, connecting Jannah and Nar, I know that my love and sacrifice for Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad will allow me to pass the Sirat. 
Why? Because my love was a love of salat, of siyam, of ibadah, of ta'a, of husn khulaq. Not a love of kalam. Not a love of words only. Not a love of my dress or the way I dress. My love is a love of amal. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran to the Prophet where he says, Qul la as'alukum alayhi ajaran illa mawaddata fil qurba that I ask you for nothing but love towards my family. But what is muwadda, my brothers and sisters? How is it different than mahabba? Is muwadda just reciting things and dressing in a certain way and, you know, and performing certain rituals? No. If you look at the meaning of muwadda, you will see, as Alama Tabatabai says, كَأَنَّهَا الحب الظاهر that it is a love which is shown through action. That the Prophet was not calling people, rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the revelation telling the Prophet to tell the people, was not calling people to say, I love you, Ya Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. No. He was say, calling them to obey Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. There is a huge difference, my brothers and sisters in faith, between love and obedience. The division and the difference between the two are profound. On the day of Ashura, you had the truest form of mawadda. We saw the manifestation of what it means. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلَكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجَرَ إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةِ On the day of Ashura was the implementation of Surah Shura verse 24. The truest form of mawadda were the hands that fell from the sides of Abi Fadl al Abbas. As Alama Taba Tabai says, it is a love which is demonstrated through action, through performance, through being the most charitable, being the most loving towards one's spouse being the best in whatever field you are in, being the best worshiper, being the best at whatever we have been asked to do, being the most loving father and husband. This is what it means to show mawadda to Ahlul Bayt because mawadda is a, mawad, is a love of action is a love in which their sunnah and tradition comes to life in our homes. It's manifested in real time in our homes and our centers and our gatherings. And this is how we can implement these lessons from Ashura, inshallah. Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Tonight, I want to mention one of the first sacrifices on the day of Ashura, which was none other than Wahab ibn Habab al-Kalbi, who was from one of the Christian tribes. His story is a story of family sacrifice. He was just newly married, and his, and his, his caravan intersected with that of Imam al Hussein. He spoke to the Imam, he listened to the message of the Imam, and he decided as a newly married man, a newly married man, huh? to join the army of Imam al Hussein. On the day of Ashura, he decided to fight with the Imam. 
The first arrows are fired. Habib ibn Madahir and Buraid stand up. The Imam signals to them to sit down. Habab asks the Imam for permission to go out into battle. He rushes out into the battle and he strikes the slave of Yasar and, and Ziyad. So Habab is now fighting. But he had his mother and his wife with him at Karbala. Imagine. فَرَجَعَ إِلَيْهِمَا And he returns to his wife and his mother and as he tells her, قَالَ يَا أَمَّا أَرَّدَيْتِ أَمْ لَا My mother, are you happy with me or not? She, st she tells to him, I will not be satisfied حَتَّى تُقْتِلُ بَيْنَ يَدَيِّ الْحُسَيْنِ I will not be satisfied with you, Radi with you until you are killed in front of Imam al Hussein. But on the other hand, he had a loving wife who tells him, قَالَتْ إِمْرَأَتُهُ بِاللَّهِ عَلَيْكَ لَا تَفْجَعْنِي بِنَفْسِكَ Oh, for God's sake, do not make me distressed. She was just married. Newly married and her husband is going out into battle. He continues to fight. His mother urges him to, to return to the battlefield. And he continued to fight. He continued to fight. He continued to fight. He returns again to his mother. Subhanallah. He returns again to his mother, hoping for his mother's rida and approval. She tells him, do not stop fighting until you are dead. So it is said, فَلَمْ يَزَلْ يُقَاتِلُ حَتَّى قُتِعَتْ يَدَى That he continued to fight until his hand was cut off. His wife ran out with courage. She grabs a rod running out into the battlefield. Imam al Hussein tells her, please return to your tent. فَأَخَذَتْ بِجَانِبْ ثَوْبِهِ She grabs the bottom of the thobe of her, of her husband. Can you imagine? She's running out into battle. She's holding on to the thobe of her husband on the day of Ashura. Hussein ibn Ali tells her, please return. Jazaytum min ahli bayti khayran. You have gotten your reward for the sake of the ahlul bayt. She then returns to the camp and her husband's hands were chopped one by one. This newly married lady had to see her husband's hands chopped off. And his mother told him, do not return to me until you become a qurbani and a sacrifice in front of our Mawlana Aba Abdullah al Hussein ibn Ali. This was the maqam of the shuhada. This was the maqam of the ansar and the ashab and their families and their mothers. I'll end with a few lines. Qala Imam Zamanina. As-salamu ala shayb al-khadib. Peace be upon the beard that is soaked in blood. As-salamu ala khadd al-tarib. Peace be upon that cheek which hit the ground. As-salamu ala maqtu al-wateen. Peace be upon the jugular vein of yours, Ya Aba Abdullah, which was severed. As-salamu ala ra'as al-marfu' Peace be upon the head which was raised. As-salamu ala shifa al-thabilat. Peace be upon those lips which were still thirsty when your head was taken from you. As-salamu alayka ya mawlai wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa sayya'lamu al-lazina dhalamu ay munqalabin yanqalibun.